not one who is bold on taking on challenges. You know, but I'm changing. Amen. Amen. So please let me turn in our Bibles to Romans chapter 4, beginning from verse 18. Okay, amen. amen. God is able to fulfill promises. All right, so quickly. Um, against all hope, Abraham is, Abraham in hope, believe, and so became the father of many nations. And just as it has been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without witnessing his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Amen. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Okay, you see, one thing that quickly jumps at me here is righteousness. All right, and uh, over time, being a disciple, I've come to understand that righteousness is not necessarily doing or saying the right thing. Right. But righteousness is actually when you do right by God. Yeah. Okay, and why do I know that? I know that because of that gentleman in Luke chapter 18, verse 18. Okay, because before now, if that guy was in the crowd, I will say, this guy is heaven's candidate. You know, but that's not the way Jesus Christ saw him. Yeah. Why? Because... He was not ready to do right by God. And, and just like I think Deji pointed out a while ago, you know, he wanted to do himself. He wanted to do things his own way. Wow. So, now the chance I have is to let you see, you know, how Abraham was able, you know, to have that credited to him as righteousness. Okay? Because even when Damilari was, talking, uh, was giving his talk this morning, he, he also gave an illustration of, you know, what the bank does, you know, for us. Okay, I'm be, be, have, have been, uh, you know, getting credits and all of that. Okay, so why is he being credited, you know, why is righteousness being credited to him? Because he was able to go through, you or rather use to his credit, three ingredients. And what is that? First was against all hope. The second one was without weakening in his faith. And the third one is being fully persuaded. You know, I have the privilege of, uh, you know, leading the remnant group in Abuja. And the first one, against all hope. What is against all hope for me and Abuja? If you do not know, know it now. Abuja has the biggest church in Nigeria. The church building, the biggest church building in Nigeria. Maybe in West Africa, you know. And that is in Abuja, the capital city. And also, he's painted in gold. <laughs> you understand? He's painted in gold. Now, we are a remnant group. You know, Abuja is very, very religious. It's a very religious society. Abuja is where money talks. Now, we are here, and we are to make disciples of these people, this city. That is very intimidating. If you, if I, if you go through my phone, you'll see, you know, all the contacts, all the people, you know, that... You know, I reach out to fix studies with and all of that, you know. And by now we are done with, you know, seeking God. I mean, uh, yes, uh, seeking God and also the word of God. Before moving into discipleship, they fizzled out. You know, because of the attraction of the word. You know, a while ago, even Dr. Drew, you know, uh, you know also brought, you know, it, uh, uh, the, the Bible, you know, and the dollar note. If we go out here, right outside of this hotel, you know, two of, I mean, two people, a, a brother with a Bible and a brother with a dollar note, you see, you will know that the attraction will be, you know, to the brother holding the dollar note. Okay? Because the truth is that, you know, the world is selling to Ross wow. something that is temporal. But we need to focus on what is eternal. All right? 80% of Abuja disciples, you know, have not had the privilege of being in a big fellowship like this. You understand? Because I'm talking about against all hope. And i just been there. I have a big challenge to mirror the big church to them. You know, and I know one of those things that I had to deal with was that, you know what, well, do we have to do things the way God does it? Wow. <laughs> okay. I need to lead by example. And I said, you know what, first, what's his first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 saying? We need to follow the example of our leaders as he follows the example of Christ. Ultimately, we are following the example of Christ. 
And because of the economic situation in the country also, it is difficult where, I mean, we, most, of, uh, most of the disciples had to be supported in terms of transportation to church and, you know, and back. These are the odds that we face. You know, but we are still there. And that is why, you know, the second, I mean, the second thing that I'm here, it says, without weakening, him is faith. You see, what do we do to stay strong in our faith? We, are we, how is our prayer life? Are we fighting? Because unless you are fighting, you will not be able to stay faithful. You must fight. How is your prayer life? You see, uh, while I was in Lagos, you know, it was a privilege for me to always hide under the shadow of, you know, Uncle B. But being thrown to, you know, going, I mean, being thrown to Abuja is like being thrown into the deep. You either swim or drown. So, you know what? I must pray. And as a matter of fact, you know, <laughs> you need to fight. Hey, I struggled going to Abuja, but I'm grateful. You know, on one occasion... You know, I, I was having this squabble with my wife and all of that. I said, hey, I would not allow Satan to be victorious in this. I had to put on my, I mean, call Uncle Balaji, put it on speaker for him to hear my wife and I. All right. Because I must be godly. I need to call myself to account. Because if I am not doing so, how will I now be an example to this few remnants? You know, God has sent me there, you know, to help. To build, I need to be an instrument to God for, for God's glory, you know, and not be one who will bring down the kingdom of God. And I also want to say I appreciate, you know, the disciples in Abuja, you know, for their sacrifice and their hearts. You know, because, you know, uh, when we meet in Gadua Estate, you know, most of the disciples stay in the suburb. And for those of us who not have the privilege of having cars, you know, we are the ones that stay in the city. You know, so it should have been the reverse. You know, so they needed, they need to be supported. You know, and that's why I appreciate, you know, the Odiah says, you know, in their, you know, uh, sacrifices, you know, to see to it that, um, you know, disciples are catered for, even in terms of their transportation. You know, and every Sunday after, every Sunday, every Sunday after church, we always have refreshment. You know, and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, two weeks ago, if he traveled, you know, to the Asian country, you know, and uh, it would have been, I mean, if, if for him, it should have been like, you know what, you guys are on your own, take care of yourselves, you know, but even while if he was away, he made sure that the, the refreshment was still served after service, you know, that is the heart, you know, that is what it takes not to wave, not to weaken in your faith, you know, continue to invest in the kingdom of God, amen, he says, being fully persuaded, brothers, are we fully persuaded that God has the power to fulfill his promises? You know, Damilari, you know, when he was giving his talk, said that, you know, we need to understand God's writing and act on it. You know, when Uncle Balaji said yesterday that um, in two years' time, we will be 10, we'll be celebrating our 10th anniversary, and we need to be at 500 at minimum. I was one of those that was like in my heart, hey, bro. Why not, even, why not stay at 300? Why go to 500? Because I wasn't fully persuaded. But like I said, you know, I'm not bold, but I'm learning to be bold. And I'm learning to know that, you know what, I need to put my confidence in God. I'm learning to know that righteousness is dying to myself and allowing God's power to walk through me. Amen? You know, and I believe fully that God is able to fulfill that promise. Yes, when he said it, I doubted, but I said, you know what, that's the spirit of God talking, and if that's what my leader says we need to do, that's what we will do. And the reason why that is so is because of fulfilled promises. Amen? Amen. We have a place in Abuja that we are worshiping, okay, and that place belongs to disciples. It's not us. Sacrificially, they've given. That is fulfilled promise. Amen. When this mission's contribution was given, I were to give, you know, close to a million, I was like, you know what, ha, you know, most of the disciples here, we support them with transportation. How are we going to be able to give close to a million in our mission's contribution? But the truth is that by the time it came to a close, we had given two times our mission's contributions. That is fulfilled promise. Please, let us know now before 
as I, before I close, what is God's promise? God's promise is Matthew 28, verse 20. I'll be with you to the very end of the age. You know, we need to always have that at the back of our mind, you know, that God is with us, even in tough situations. Amen? Even in tough, especially in tough situations. Because the word is telling us, the, it's giving us convenience so that we can doubt him. But God is saying, you know what, especially in those tough institutions, I am with you. You see, my daughter finished school and, you know, she is to get, you know, a one-year composite internship. Um, she, all the while, while she was in, in university, she was away from the main church. And the university that she applied, one of the universities, I mean, one of the teaching hospitals that she applied to is UBTH, which is actually affiliated to her school, which means that 90% she will be giving that uh, appointment. You see, she has spent seven years in university already. Because initially, when she got in, she, was, she wanted to read medicine, but they didn't give her that course. So she has to spend extra two years before she moved on. So now the, she brought it before us. Should I take University of Benin Teaching Hospital? You see, in our heart, my wife and I, was that will we be harm, doing this girl harm by telling her you know, to waive that option? Because chances are she may not be able to get another one immediately. But we say, you know what, there is no church in Benin. Here in Abuja, you're already helping. And I be, we believe that, you know, you need to give that up, stay in Abuja, and trust that God will give you one here in Abuja. That same week, that same week, she got a call, you know, from the admin director. I mean, this is the person that is in charge of everything administration in National Hospital. And it happens that he is from my village. You see? So that is how God goes before us. That is how God goes before us. You see, one thing that keeps me faithful as a disciple is that, you see, we need to identify little victories in our lives. Unless you identify little victories in your life, you will not be able to truly have faith in God. You know, these are some of the victories in my life because in Romans 10, 17, it says, you know, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is in the word of Christ. What are the little victories in your life that is keeping you on? You know what? How are you trusting God? What are you trusting God for? Before I sit down, I had the privilege of watching this movie, right. Sudden Death, Van Damme. And in that movie, you know, Van Damme took, <laughs> took two of his kids to watch, you know, a, a hockey match. And in the stadium, there was a bomb scare. And at this time, one of his child had gone missing. So he told his son that was on the terrace, stay and never move. Under, not, under no circumstance should you move from your seat. Well, he went in search of the other child. And in the process of that commotion, somebody came and said, stand up. I need to take you out. That your dad said I should bring you. The, rebu the boy refused to follow that man. He had wrong intention, but he didn't know the man had wrong intention. But because daddy has said, under no circumstance should you move from here, he remained there. Yeah. You see, the touching part of that movie is when Van Damme Virgil came to take the son from there. Remember, the, he was the only one on the terrace in the whole stadium. And the boy broke down in tears and said, daddy, I didn't move. Daddy, I didn't move. I was drawn to tears at that point. You see, that is the way it needs to be with us and God. That regardless of all the commotions around us, but because daddy said we should remain there, under no circumstances should we move and remain standing. Stay and remain there. Remember, in the stampede, people died. People lost their life in the stampede. But because he remained there, he was safe. For, and his dad came and took him to his own safety. That's the way it needs to be with us. Is that the way it is with us? Do we believe that God is able to fulfill all promises? In our lives, are we investing spiritually or we're investing in the world? You see, that is the challenge that we need to take, even as we continue in this conference. Thank you very much for the privilege.